hello hello welcome to live with art we are live with art today friday 4 p.m if you're flagging a bit and it's been a long week i'm hoping this will be a nice chance for you to relax and hear some kind of really interesting stories of artists that i'm going to be speaking to and um and that's kind of what i'm doing here i think instagram's an amazing platform to connect people to you know it's not just a visual platform uh sorry i'm just adjusting my camera um yeah it's not just a visual you know it's really nice to kind of listen if you if you can't necessarily watch um but wonderful that you're here thank you for joining i am going to be speaking today to um a very special artist but um called nick jones who is a landscape artist he's got an exhibition here in london but before i introduce you properly by adding him to this stream i just want to talk a little bit about what i'm trying to do here so these are just, as I said, live conversations with artists. I've got some really exciting people that are going to be on that I'm really uh, looking forward to having conversations with. It's sort of a chance for, as I said, people to connect. It's a chance for you to sit back and relax and hear something uh, that you might not normally hear on a platform that is really, really great for sort of sharing and getting everyone involved. I'm actually really hoping to do some episodes where I invite people to have a chat with me just off the cuff if you feel brave enough and you're not necessarily uh used to chatting to anyone live then it can be a bit scary and daunting but you'll get used to it after five minutes the adrenaline the adrenaline comes right down and you relax into it so that's what i'm doing casual friday chats with creatives sharing what they're up to new projects new ideas i'm speaking to heidi may from aesthetic laundry she's going to be on in a couple of weeks i'm speaking to kate daudy who's got an exhibition called one the chaos at the yorkshire sculpture park um, some really, really cool people. Um, so yes, that's what I'm doing. Welcome if you're just joining. My name is Anna Gammons. I am going to be hosting this live with art Instagram series. So let's get back to our guest. I am now going to invite, uh, who is invite? Right, here we are. Nick, Nick Jones. Can I find you? Uh, oh, view request. I believe that's a request from my dad. No, nope, dad, really sorry, but you can't come on the um right i believe i've just invited nick jones to join hello nick hi, hi. you made it um you did you did i died i'm just adjusting my camera so you yeah. can see an appropriate level of my head um i think my dad tried to uh join this call which was slightly embarrassing um, <laughs> you're very welcome <laughs> Would have been really funny um but i'm glad he's watching hi dad hi everyone else watching um nick it's so lovely to have you here thank you for joining me so you're having a good friday i am thank you yeah very good nick just told me he went for a bike ride before this because he's clearly a lot more organized than me uh getting his exercise in before we've even started talking so that he's fresh and ready for this chat <laughs> i'm just checking can, I, can you hear me nick yes, you can hear me I okay can you, yeah, can you? okay perfect yeah. So, Nick Jones, you are a landscape artist and you have an exhibition currently running at the Crane Coleman Gallery in London. Mm -hmm. It is a solo exhibition. It is just your work. And I think it probably be described as a sort of retrospective of the yeah. last 30 years mm -hmm. of your career and your relationship with this gallery. So, without further ado, why don't you talk me through... Uh, your journey as an artist to kind of get some context before we talk about your exhibition. How did you become an artist? Did you study art? The floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Um, well, I, I, I guess when I was at school, um, art was my big, the thing that kind of kept me, it was the thing I enjoyed most, really. It, uh, I didn't enjoy school particularly. It wasn't a very comfortable environment for me. Mm. Um, but the actual painting and drawing and pottery and things was was the highlight really of the week and I'd spend a lot of time doing that um, and then so I, that progressed on to going to art college because I wasn't really sure what else mm -hmm. I wanted to do so I went to art college in Bristol and loved absolutely loved it it was an amazing opportunity to experiment to make new friends and just be in this mm. you know four years to play around really with yeah. with the things you I felt most passionate about and then I left college and really didn't know what to do with myself I I I didn't know what to paint. I mean, I had mostly done painting at college. I didn't, I didn't know what to paint. I didn't know what I mm. wanted to say. 
And so I ended up spending a couple of years working in stained glass. I'd, I'd done a stained glass course. Yes, I read I this college. about you. This absolutely fascinated me. <laughs> so I just, I just made stained glass windows for people's houses and, and any work I could get. And then that kind of dried up around 1989. And then suddenly I kind of felt I want to paint. And I just knew what I wanted to paint. And all these, over about 12 months, all these paintings just came pouring out of me, these dark, sort of moody, sort of wild landscapes and and when I was about after I'd done about five months of that my a friend in, in the studio next door said oh you ought to try and find a gallery in London and I thought okay <laughs> I'll go and find a gallery As Why, what was I easy. thinking <laughs> what was I you thinking? know where you should go London and just walk straight into a gallery and well, get them to right. put your work up <laughs> and so I said okay I'll go to London and I had 10 10 paintings I'd done and I'd taken some little photos and uh and, and put some in the car and I went to London and I had a little list of galleries I thought maybe I could fit in there and then I mm -hmm. I went to them all and they all went it's, it's horrible walking into a gallery oh sort my of, gosh like, it's really fun. horrible and they all went no sorry and and so I kind of went oh I kind of almost breathed a sigh of relief and thought oh well I can just enjoy the next couple of days looking mm. at some exhibitions and one of them mm. was um an exhibition of paintings by Sir Matthew Smith at, at the Crane Kalman Gallery and mm -hmm. And so I went in and had a wander around and loved it. And um, I was just about to leave when something just made me say, you know, really kind of quite out of character, just go up to the elderly gentleman behind the desk and say, would you, do you look at the work of young artists? And he, he went, it was Mr. Kalman himself. And he went, yes, he would look at it. And he looked at them and went, can you bring some of these into the gallery for me? I'd like to see them. And um, oh so a couple of days later, I brought in two paintings that fitted in the car and he, he um, said that, they're difficult paintings. They'd be hard to sell, but he liked them and asked me to keep in touch. And oh my goodness! So, and it only really... takes one go, doesn't it? Yeah. It takes one lucky break where lucky someone break, turns around yeah. and says, "Yeah, I actually really want to see what you're doing." And and then so so he just said, "Keep in touch." And so every six months, I'd send him some more slides, and he'd go, Ooh, "I'm not sure these are quite." Well, the first set of slides I sent me is slightly different from the kind of work I normally show, but mm -hmm. I quite find them quite interesting. Maybe I could put some in a show in it next year or something, and then. So the next year I came with a load of stuff in the van and he brought some into the gallery and he looked at them and then he wasn't sure, you could tell he wasn't sure, but he was asking lots of questions. And then, and then Robin, who works at the gallery still, um, he said, there's more in the van. So we all sort of wandered out to the van and had a bit of a showing on the side of the road <laughs> at Brompton Square. And he went, okay, I really like them. I'd really like to give you a show. And, um, you know, and it's a sign of my good intentions. I'll buy some when you've done a few more and, um, it didn't, I mean, it took a longer to work out. It was a few years before I showed any, you know, substantial amount of work there, but it was mm -hmm. a, it's a kind of magical story in, in a way. Um, it's like a, like a, every artist imagines what yeah. that moment is like. And I think yours is the most um, romantic story yeah. <laughs> about, you know, really connecting with the gallery and particularly with the owner as well. And then sort of saying, you know, really authentically saying, you know, this is my work. It's literally in the back of my van on the mm. street. Would you like to see it? Mm. Um, you know, it wasn't somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody. You just, yeah. it was the right time and the right place for you, mm. which is a really nice story. Mm. And I, I don't think I really appreciated it at the time. When you're young, you just kind of take things as they come and, and mm. do your, you know, mm. do your best, I guess. Mm. And then it's only really looking back now mm. over the 30 years of showing with them that I begin to make sense of it a bit and, and see how all the bits of the puzzle fit yeah. together. Absolutely. You know, and there's... Oh, sorry, sorry. So this, so this shows really a kind of a, a, a look back, really, at, at the last 30 years. And, and, and those, the two paintings that I actually brought into the gallery that time are hanging in the gallery, and mm. along with a kind of selection of 40-odd mm. works spanning the, the years since. So Fantastic. Inter really interesting to see them all hanging together for the first time. I am sure. And it really is 30 years. I mean, there's, there's you know, Nick's post on his Instagram, a photo. There's a fantastic photo of you standing in, I, in the gallery, I, I assume, with no, one of just, the works. Oh, it's not. No, just, uh, just in the studio. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, in the studio. studio shots. But it's the work that you're showing again this mm. year now. And then it's, it's the work that you produced uh, 30 years ago. Is that so, right? Well, it's me standing in front of the same painting, one yeah. in 1990 and one in 2020, 21. So it's Fantastic. like trying to get the same kind of pose. Yeah, <laughs> pose yeah. In, but... Oh, I loved it. But it really, but it really is 30 years. Is, is, yeah. and, and kind of to see these works all together, as you said, must have been, must have been very interesting. I want, I want the people listening to gauge um, when we are talking about your work, 
what sort of works we're talking about i've obviously seen images of them for those who haven't and who haven't seen your work in the flesh can you describe your landscape work to people because it's got a really distinctive and thoughtful tone to it that i would love if you could yeah okay i'll have a go i mean words obviously don't really do mm. well I, I won't be able to describe it. you know that's that's why i paint because i can't say what i want to say mm -hmm. in words but they're they're landscapes they are um they span from being quite abstract at one end of the spectrum through to being you know very figurative um, and yeah. they are full of light and um a sense of well i think the initial works were quite turbulent and and visceral and um you know not, not disturbed but quite sort of dramatic images and then mm -hmm. since then i've been gradually moving to a much calmer more spacious um place so that there's mm. a there's a real progression where things are emptied out and mm. and become much simpler and much more gentle mm. and much less much much less brushwork in a way much more mm. like they just happened rather than mm. having been been painted so so mm. light's mm. the key thing space is a key thing and it's the feeling of uh, presence maybe or mm. um so mm -hmm. what, how, do, how would you describe them? Oh, I'm glad you asked me. Well, I mean, <laughs> I was trying to work out more than anything. Um, sorry, for those of you who have just joined, I'm talking to artist, landscape artist Nick Jones, who has an exhibition at the Crane Kalman Gallery here in London that opened yesterday. Um, so welcome to those of you who have just joined. Um, yes, Nick, we're describing, we're describing your work. I was really interested to hear that you work with sandpaper and I was, I was really interested in the textures of your work. And obviously, you know, having spoken to you, I know sort of roughly what mediums you use. Um, there's a little oil, there was a little, now there's a little more acrylic um, and there's a, definitely a textual element. But I would say that thoughtful is one of the ways I would describe your work. Um, emotive, you know, they, they don't, they're abstracts, of course, and they're landscapes. So, of course, for me, those two things are kind of familiar in some ways. And um, But the tone of them is just, is very different to what I do. And, and I think that they are somewhat moody, kind of um, a bit more thoughtful, maybe a bit darker in some ways. There's a lot more depth. There's um, a freedom to them as well, which I think is really interesting. A lot of your work seems to be, um, it doesn't have the parameters of a traditional landscape, which I love. Um, and the use of light and colour is, of course, incredibly accomplished as well. And I really do encourage people to go on to Nick's profile um, on Instagram and have a look at the work properly. Um, oh, I say properly, properly is in the flesh. Obviously go to the exhibition um, that is running until the 30th of October at the Crane Cullman Gallery in London. But if you can't get there for some reason, then definitely do go on and see what it is that we're talking about. Um, Nick, when, when I look at your work, it feels very personal and very... Um, it feels like it's kind of coming from a place within, which I think you've sort of mentioned. Mm. Do you have outside influences or is it really sort of just a projection of um, what's going on inside? Uh, yeah, very, I'm very much influenced by the landscape. And I think it's an imp quite an interesting distinction in, in the way I practice over the last 30 years. Probably for the first 23 years, mm. I would generally start a painting with no idea of where it was going to end up. It would literally mm. evolve through the, through the process of painting. Um, mm -hmm. And or be discovered. It was, it was a kind of like a dance, really, where the painting has got something to say, and, and I, I'm trying to sort of cooperate with it, but also shape it to a, to a degree until something emerges or mm -hmm. doesn't emerge, as the case may be. Mm -hmm. So there was it was very fluid and improvisational. And then about six or seven years ago, I quite dramatically changed approach and started working with a much more planned strategy so I knew where I was trying to go and I had a rough plan about how I was going to get there and mm. hopefully I would get something approximating to mm. what I wanted and I think that there was a sort of compensation there for things in my personal life being really becoming really difficult at that point and I just needed the security of knowing what was going on in the studio rather than having a completely blank canvas and that's so you know, interesting like there wasn't that I didn't have so the capacity sense. to to just go with the flow. I just needed something a bit more of a plan really to give mm. me some kind of solid mm. ground to, to stand on. Mm. That's really interesting. Um, and, and I want to sort of thank you for bringing that up because I think a lot of artists or a lot of people that uh, look at artwork would argue that, no, you have to be really instinctual when you paint and you have to just feel it out. But actually having a structure and a process 
can really inform mm. the creativity and give you a safe space to experiment. And, yeah. I, and I think that that's very important that you said that. And I'm, I'm glad you did. Um, masking away some of the artistic <laughs> yeah. secrets. I love it. But sorry, I carry think, on. I think, I think limitations are really important in, you know, giving, limiting, giving yourself limits really helps mm. creativity. If you've just got complete, you could do anything, it's yeah. a bit overwhelming. But if you say, I'm just going to spend 30 minutes on this painting and then I'm stopping whatever happens. That really focuses the mind and, and opens up all sorts of new um, possibilities, really. Yeah. So I think limits are good. And though I didn't really feel that was a limitation, it felt like it was more of a, a plan. You know, mm. I, I'd found, I, could f I found a new way of working, which I wanted to just explore really and see mm -hmm. what emerged mm -hmm. and you've mentioned as well on on you know when when you speak about your work in this exhibition you've got a beautifully um a beautifully made um what was it called i guess a, a book on your um exhibition a kind of a booklet if you will um but it's more of a book really and it's absolutely stunning but it, you talk about there's a stillness to the work as well which I thought was interesting because the way you said it was that it wasn't a stillness you felt was coming for you, from you, but rather something that you felt you were lacking and compensating mm. for, which was really resonated. I wonder mm. if you could explain that a bit more because I thought that was beautiful. And, and looking at your work, you can see that. Mm. I think so. It's an interesting um, realization, really, to think. I think look when people look at my paintings, they often go, oh, "Gosh, they're so calm and mm. so serene, and so make me feel so peaceful." and and, th and I think they sense that that's coming out of, you know, that's uh, coming from within me. But I, I think for a, a lot of the time, it was more a case of desperately looking for mm. things that were lacking in my inner life and in my outer life, trying to create this safe, sp spacious, mm. um, serene um, environment to inhabit myself. And so mm. the studio became like a safe place, a place where I could... Um, mm just connect with what I was looking for really or longing to find mm. Mm. and of course art is a way to understand ourselves as well mm. as the world around us yeah also yeah which I like it's a, absolutely it's a way of making sense of life really even though I mm. think it's not often till quite a lot later we can look back and go ah oh, so that's what that was about you, you know we, we as painters or artists you you do what you feel you have to do mm. you don't need to understand why you're doing it mm. But mm. doing it somehow helps you understand. Mm. Um, it's a strange paradox. No, it makes yeah, but... it makes perfect sense. A paradox, yeah. maybe, but it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, now, your your work, obviously, we've mentioned that you're a landscape artist. It focuses a lot on the landscape, mm. um, but it's very elemental as well. And I know that you have a very close relationship with the environment. And um, I know you've travelled as well to create some of your works. You went to the Arctic mm. Circle, I want to say, mm. as well, I believe. Mm. Um, can you talk us through that as well? Because, you know, there's on one hand, there's the Arctic um, and the kind of more cold... Mm. Uh, elements and then you've got your relationship with fire and how that's played a role in your work too so I'd be interested to hear about that okay. development. Well uh, it's interesting because for the for those first 23 years when I was working I didn't leave the UK once mm. it was I was just working here and soaking up the just the environment around where we live mm. short going for short walks looking at you know just trying to look and mm. looking at the sky and all of that kind of fed into the work I was producing and then when I then I, at the end as as those paintings were just coming to the end and becoming more and more and more emptied out and spacious and full of light and I thought I really want to go to the Arctic because they mm. were becoming quite sort of arctic -y paintings and I, and I mm. around that time became aware of the this extraordinary phenomenon the northern lights of the aurora mm. borealis and I thought paint as, you know, as an artist who's interested in landscape and color and abstraction and pattern this it just felt like this is i was just gonna i just want to to try and see this and see whether i can find a way of painting the northern mm. lights so i made a trip up um with my eldest daughter to finish lapland for this for a few days and uh, on the, the just within the first hour of arriving there was this incredible northern lights display and i got my camera oh, out and gosh. took all these photos and then some people never see them they go for like two <laughs> I, weeks and I, you're know, like, I, know, I was time. lucky but i didn't i didn't see them though i didn't see them oh, I, I, see. I saw them but i didn't see them so right, i came home right, and right. i got the camera got the photos out oh, and thought no. 
I didn't, I, I wasn't there. I was so stressed or so kind of like, yeah. you know, this is it, the Northern Lights. I didn't actually, I didn't experience them in the way that you might hope to. So then mm-hmm. I made, and I tried, began to feel around for how to paint them and with a little, a little bit of progress. And then went back six months later and had, had a really lovely six days with lots of beautiful different aurora displays. And then it all began to sort of, I began to see it then. I think. Mm-hmm. But it's so hard to make sense of what you're seeing. I think it's not, and easy it's not like it's just so mm. different from what we're used to experiencing mm. Mm. and then that in turn led to a desire to you know to go into to experience art you know the higher arctic and i was had the great privilege of being appointed as our artist in resident with the scott polar research institute and what a title it's, oh it's good yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the scott polar research institute they're kind of the guardians of british polar history and they're based in cambridge and they have these residences every year and i was fortunate enough to to get one had this wonderful two weeks in greenland and baffin island and then all these arctic paintings came pouring and mm-hmm. pouring out so that was very um a, a different kind of experience of or, or the work was had what I was doing had a slightly different relationship because I would, these were for quite figurative paintings of specific places that I'd been, whereas before I was painting mm. for much more from the heart or from a kind of unconscious place of just seeing what, what mm. came up. But I think under all, there's a kind of deep love there of the natural world and mm. just yeah. a desire to, to see it better and to maybe help other people see it with fresh, mm. fresh eyes. Mm. And probably with appreciation, I imagine as well. I, I before we spoke live, I, I did briefly talk talk to Nick about you know climate change and things like that, and I, we won't drum on about it. But I think that there is um, there's an urgency happening at the moment, and thank goodness there is. And I think your work is a very timely exhibition about the beauty of nature, about the wonderment of nature, and and the phenomenal you know things that that it produces so i i think that that is an added level to what you're doing as well um just to introduce those uh, new listeners welcome hello uh, welcome to live with art i'm talking to nick jones who is a landscape artist he currently has a solo exhibition at the crane cowman gallery in london if you are around you should definitely go and see it it's an, it, it it's opened yesterday it's going until the 30th of october definitely go and see it if you can um nick i want to talk about let's talk about this exhibition so you mentioned that there's 30 no 40 40 pieces yeah, spanning 40, yeah. spanning 30 years worth mm-hmm. of your career as an artist and your relationship with this gallery that was sort of your introduction if you will to the art world how on earth did you approach doing that how did you arrange the gallery is it in chronological order how did you um how did your thought process go it's a big project well i think i mean i i my job is to obviously paint the paint the pictures and it's the gallery's job to to curate mm. the show really um though I was involved and I was involved in the selection of images and um and I was involved in the kind of the design of the, the catalog as well mm. and the, the catalog is designed in a chronological way so it, it it's divided into four different periods or bodies of work and it's mm. though I did just before the work went off to the gallery I did start in the studio just popped a few of the older ones next to some of the newer ones and was just really surprised at the conversations they started having with each other and the way they they just looked so different when they were hanging next to each other and it was almost like they really came alive so Mm. the the show is 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 hung in a much more um it's not chronological chronological at all it's just whatever's going to look best in in the space Mm. um but it's really interesting seeing them mm. just all in the same space for the first time and, and getting a sense that actually they are talking to each other. Or mm. Um, mm. So it's odd, when I arrived um, at the gallery yesterday, I you know, arrived at the gallery, two nice paintings in the window, walk into the gallery, lots of paintings on the walls. And it, it, was, it was really difficult, it's quite a difficult, um, experience to have in a way because I can't quite think what I'm trying to say but it's like they're all my babies and they're all <laughs> hanging on the wall and they've all left home now they're hanging yeah, on the wall it is like that, yeah. it is like and, that. and they've been hanging there for a few days chatting to each other mm. and then I walk in and I'm a bit stressed and they're going 
hello like this and I'm going I, like, I can't talk to you now you, yeah. <laughs> I can't talk to you now you look great um but so it's like and I left thinking I didn't actually really look at them they were all mm. there quietly serenely doing mm. what they do but I didn't mm. actually in that first visit connect to mm. them apart from thinking they look fine and they look happy and um so what you're saying is you're going to have to visit your own exhibition essentially think, and get a real sense of yeah I think it's, it's 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 an interesting thing looking at one's own painting I don't know how you find mm. it when you see your pictures hanging embarrassing elsewhere. sometimes awkward okay. other times uh, joyous on other yeah. occasions but it's also for you this is such a personal exhibition because it is not just 30 years of painting mm. in your career it's it's 30 years of you right mm. that you're yeah. seeing on the wall so how has that been for you kind of experiencing that well like well I guess you said you didn't really experience it properly but that this whole process has it has it been a kind of profound experience emotionally it it's been i think during during lockdown i didn't do any painting and i spent a lot of time thinking about the work and, and sort of mm. reviewing the last 30 years and um turning 35 millimeter slides into digital images and getting a new website <laughs> up and running and, yeah. and thinking and thinking about the work and i've been working with a psychotherapist for three years now and some of the work we've been doing together has been about making sense of the paintings. Mm. Well, that's not been the focus of the work, but they, so they're obviously an important part of the, the story, mm -hmm. really, of, of my life. And mm. um, so I did a lot of thinking about putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And, and there were lots of kind of aha moments where I think, ah, oh, so that's why I was interested in the Northern Lights. Well, that's mm. why all the brushwork slowly started disappearing. And so mm. I did some writing and, I, and made a, a podcast about that. And so th this this kind of journey of m making sense of the last 30 years has been going on for, you know, a year and a half or so now. And, and this mm. exhibition, in a way, is a kind of culmination of that mm. process. So it feels like a laying of a, a foundation for something that's still to come, but also a kind of a, an acknowledging and celebrating of actually what's what's gone on, where I've come yeah. from so far. So Absolutely. And, and I think it's quite rare as well that um, that one artist has such a long relationship with mm. one with one gallery and and you know clearly there's a sort of I, I guess profoundness to this exhibition for the gallery as well because you know they've been in a relationship with you for the last 30 mm. years and vice versa so I imagine that it has some real sort of um, sentimental quality for them and an emotional quality for them as well it, mm. it's not just a re reflection of you it's a reflection yeah. of you know how, how far they've come in 30 yeah. years and and absolutely all those things can well, I, I guess, ask? Oh, sorry. Go on. No, go on. no, 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 please. I was, no, I was, I, get, I was only going to say that, you know, obviously they take a risk when they're investing in an art, you know, mm -hmm. and I guess it, it, it's, I'm imagining maybe they, uh, it comes with a certain sense of satisfaction that they've kind of been able to support me on this journey and, mm -hmm. and in a way that it's been amazing, really. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I'm very Absolutely. grateful for their, for their, for their, for their, for their support over the years absolutely and i ask this question to artists when they've got an exhibition or um a particular uh, display coming up or an, or an artistic experience that they're putting on um and they don't often like this question and i'm, I'm gonna ask you what how would you like an audience to see or or view your work how would you like them to feel about it what would you like them to get out of that experience um oh, so should i tell you why artists don't like yeah go on they all say that they say, um, oh, I want them. I want people to just feel how they feel. I don't want to direct people in their emotions, um, which I think is absolutely fair enough. But I just mm. wondered whether there was something specific that perhaps you were hoping people would take away from yeah. seeing your work. I, I think I'd really like them to feel a kind of connection, a sense of mm. um, authentic um, aliveness. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, some 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 power or spiritual power or some some real uh well oh, i don't it's hard to put into words but it's a sense of um, just i'd like them to come away thinking i've connected with something there mm -hmm. and it's and i and maybe the world looks different mm. now slightly different when they mm absolutely it's also a universal theme as well I, I know that you you mentioned that you did at some point do some figurative work and um, this is obviously predominantly landscape work mm. it's something that we can all connect to and mm. and i think that it, it's you know I, I spoke to you briefly about the fact that in lockdown 
uh, or coronavirus has had a profound impact on so many of us um, in different ways. But one of the ways that it impacted a lot of people in my life was was that we sort of had this new appreciation for the environment and our surroundings. And, you know, that one walk a day that we got became euphoric because it was the one time we got to be out the house and see, you know, the beauty of nature and things. So um, I think that there will be a lot of people that connect with your work purely for the fact that it's landscape, but I think it has a new lease of life because of yeah. when you have chosen to exhibit yeah. as well. I think, I think the, the experience of going to the Arctic was so profound for me in terms of opening up, you know, th well, thawing me out in a way, but also mm. opening up um, space in my life. And I, mm. and I would just like it if these paintings in some small way opened up yeah. a little bit of space for, for other people and, th and they can come away feeling refreshed and... Mm -hmm. Um, just maybe taken to a slightly different mm. place mm. or level. Or... Mm. Absolutely. And, you, and you've had some of these works for, you know, th 30 years. You know, you've had them, you've had, where have you been keeping them? In your, well, in your home, in your studio? <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's four, four works, well, there's six works from like 25, 30 years ago. Two of them were sold to a friend. Yeah. And one was rolled in the studio and the other was just racked up in the studio. So right. the one that un I unrolled and put onto a stretcher hadn't been a, seen the light of day for 30 years. And that, and that was a fire yeah. painting, actually. And that's the painting that set me off on the fire route. Because as I, I re-stretched it and I removed the varnish and put a new coat, coat of varnish and, and touched it up. And as I was touching it up, I was thinking, this feels amazing. This energy, this kind of surge mm -hmm. of rawness. I thought, I really want to start painting fire. Mm -hmm. And so that's yeah. where I started doing the, the, the little mm -hmm. experiments on sandpaper mm -hmm. around painting fire. And, that kind of steered me into this new vein, really, which I'm beginning just finding my feet in. So, mm -hmm. so your, your latest works, the fire paintings, then are they, are they the most recent that you've done? Yes, yeah. And they're on That's, sandpaper, you said as well. What what does that give? Well, the sandpaper these no, these aren't in the exhibition. These are all just new kind of exploratory works. The sandpaper is lovely to paint on. It's well, it suits it obviously wouldn't suit all artists and all different techniques but what I was trying to do mm. really quick mm -hmm. putting the paint on washing it off putting it back on washing it off it, the graininess of the sand gives a lovely a lovely um or well, grainy texture that mm. just seems to look evoke fire and smoke and mm. yeah it really it was just an interesting experience I'm trying to think about how can I reproduce that effect on canvas is it possible to do that or do I need to work yeah. on wood or there's something? definitely some um firstly I wouldn't I wouldn't have said sandpaper it seems like a natural uh kind of foundation for a piece of artwork but I mean it's clearly doing something that you know it's it's doing wonders with your work and it looks mm. fantastic I'm a huge fan of texture anyway so mm. maybe it is uh silly of me not to put two and two together with that but there is definitely stuff you can buy and it's got a name and i'm forgive me i can't remember now but it is it's like a textural like a sand almost with mm. paint and you lacquer that on okay. and on a canvas and that can give you the texture that yeah. you want so i've um, been trying to do my own kind of thing mixing sand in with with uh, like gel mediums and things and it's, it's yeah yeah so this quite the same so this wasn't this wasn't lockdown work, was it? This was. No, this, this is all the last lockdown. couple of months. This is two or three last right. two or three months. Right. Do you think that you've had a shift? I know. I know that's such a stereotypical question. Mm. How's lockdown changed your artwork? But have you found that there has been um, a, a shift in what you've been doing and what you've been focusing on? Um, Obviously, apart from the fire and. I think. I think. Well, I, I spent all probably a year just focusing on the thinking about the work, the website, the you know, just making sense of the journey, and then I started. To, when I got a little bit of time became available in the studio, I tried a few different avenues and nothing quite, mm. you know, didn't really, ca didn't ignite as you might say. Um, and then the fire thing ignited. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think lockdown was particularly, particularly, you know, that wasn't particularly significant in yeah. changing the way I, I worked, but yeah. I don't know. It's hard to. No, no, no. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's difficult to um, to kind of quantify, especially as you know you're going through your own mm. processes anyway, mm. as you've already mm. spoken about. So no pressure, no pressure to have been impacted or, or profoundly kind of mm. changed or whatever in terms of your artistry. 
Um, but I've just found that as with a lot of artists, you know, they have shifted slightly in what they've been doing or the way they've been looking at things or perspectives. Um, so obviously you are, you know, I'm speaking to Nick Jones, by the way. Nick is um, an, an artist, a landscape artist who's got an exhibition at the Crane Kalman Gallery in London, um, which runs until the 30th of October. It opened yesterday. So, of course, this is a huge moment for you. This is a big exhibition. This is a solo show. What is next for Nick Jones? Where are you going after this? Where are you well, taking your beautiful work? I don't know. Well, I, I think um, I'm going to give some proper time to exploring the firework and seeing where that goes. It feels very... Mm -hmm. Um, timely. I mean, I, I think the, in, in lots of ways, time, it, it fires such a powerful and dangerous and um, alive element. Mm. It, it just feels there's, there's so many resonances there from personal through to global with the world being on fire, but also the sense of pa inner passion and um, so, 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 and so much symbolism around fire and it's so, been so important in human history in terms of human beings being the only creatures on the earth who actually use fire and what it's enabled us mm. to to do um mm. so i think there's certainly a few months there before i can really decide what, what i don't have any other plans really in terms of mm. but but i'm i'm inter interestingly though i i was had an email from a, a friend who was uh, one of my tutors at college and i'd got in touch with him recently and and sent him the catalogue and he'd sent a really insightful email back talking about wondering about where I was going next and he said mm -hmm. I was wondering are you going to carry on up to ever higher levels of spacious emptiness or are you going to turn back and do mm -hmm. something much more visceral like those early works and I thought oh that's really that's really interesting yeah. observation I was thinking oh, I think it is actually going to be the more visceral kind of mm -hmm. but but then I thought maybe I could do both I could have you know mm -hmm. like two streams of work going on at the same time one being mm. Mm. ever more pure and simple and emptied mm. out and then balancing mm. that with this, mm. this but you might find energy. that one informs the other yeah. so one might satisfy one sort of aspect of yourself mm. and one might satisfy mm. another i think it's sometimes really nice to oscillate between mm. intensities of one thing and another thing yeah. especially when you're a creative person and and you know sticking to one thing is uh, can be sometimes unfulfilling. So it's, that's a really nice thing to hear. So my favourite question to ask, because it's important, is um, where can listeners, anyone watching, where can they go to find your work, apart from obviously this mega exhibition at the, I keep the Crane Kalman. Okay. I keep, <laughs> Crane, <laughs> Crane, Crane, Crane Kalman. I want to make sure I get it right, because I kept saying the, I kept saying the name wrong. But, um, Crane Kalman Gallery, it runs until the 30th of October. It's a solo show. It's beautiful. I've seen the catalogue. It's fantastic. The works are the works are stunning. They're very thoughtful. Um, they're very emotional. They're very visceral. They're element, elemental, among other things. And I think your story is is really is really nice and and comforting and inspiring uh, at the same time. So apart from this fantastic exhibition, where can people go to find? more about you and what you're doing well i think the the, the website was my lockdown labor of love so i would have to mm. send you there first it, it's mm -hmm. got well, it's probably got 900 paintings on there it's got podcasts and short film clips and mm -hmm. um some of the, my story some essays and things so i would mm -hmm. send you there first that will give you a link to instagram as well so and that's uh, nick oh sorry nick, uh, it's nicholasjones.info nicholas if you jones google nick sense. jones artist or nicholas jones artist you'll you'll mm. you'll find it so Go there first, maybe, and then and then you could explore Instagram and um, mm -hmm. and then the galleries. Plenty of pictures on the gallery website as well at cranekalman dot com. So mm -hmm. those those are my top tips. Fantastic, Nick. Thank you so much for talking to me today. I I I am sure this exhibition is going to be a huge success. I really appreciate you speaking to me about it, about your work, and I hope that if people are planning on going to the exhibition, they maybe give this a listen um, and a watch so they can be more informed and find out a little bit more information, um, as well as obviously your catalogue and your website as well. So it's a nice little addition to to what's yes. going on at the moment. And um, and thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to mm. speak to you today. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's been good to, yeah. good to meet you and chat. Very, very welcome. Right, I am going to, uh, hang on, Nick. I think, I don't know how to dismiss you without. <laughs> I <laughs> so think, I just log out? Yeah, I think that might, I think okay. that might be the only way. I'm so okay. sorry. <laughs> Bye, Anna.
Bye. Bye. <laughs> and that is me getting to grips with uh, Instagram Live and just telling people they have to leave. Um, I think I'm still live. Hopefully I'm still live. Um, Nick, it was an absolute pleasure to speak to you. If you would like to get involved with Live with Art, if you want to come on here and have a chat, um, as I said, I am planning on doing an open kind of call for artists as well please do send me a message. It's very easy to get hold of me. I'm here on Instagram. Um, I spend far too much time on Instagram because uh, it's part of my job. Uh, and also who doesn't love Instagram? Um, so please do get in contact with me. I really hope you enjoy listening to these sort of artistic stories that I'm doing. Um, I've been loving your comments as well. Um, Nick, you'll see when you maybe go back and listen to this, everyone's being incredibly complimentary about your work. They're really enjoying um, hearing about your story as well which is difficult you know when you're a starting artist and you don't often know how to begin your journey it's really nice to hear different shades of how that happens for people so wonderful chatting to you Nick um, as I said get in contact if you'd like to thank you very much for listening to Live With Art I'm Anna Gammons and it's been a pleasure talking to you today enjoy your weekend looks like it's going to be sunny thank the lord um, enjoy happy Friday